Hello viewers, and welcome to Let's Play Together, Sword Coast Legends. Sort of, kind of. Okay, quick little bit of back history. Sword Coast Legends was released just in October, end of October 2015. And of course there was a lot of high expectations for it because it's a D&D, top down isometric game, looks a lot like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale, and I had a lot of fun with those, a lot of people had a lot of fun with those. But it definitely is not that game. Um, it's not the epic, sprawling, storyline-intensive, NPC-intensive, you know, RPG that maybe a lot of people were expecting. So, naturally, those people are feeling burned, and I can see where that would happen. Um, a lot of high pressure on digital extremes and end space. Uh, let's be honest, they were never going to hit Bioware standards because, you know, pre-EA Bioware. Nah. But, at the same time, it's still not a bad game. And to illustrate that, myself and Arcanum.0, aka DMZ2112, who you will remember from such wonderful games as Aliens Colonial Marines and the actually much better than we expected Fear 3, uh, I've co-opted with him in the past, and so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go through at least a bit of the main campaign, maybe more of it, depending, and co-op it and see how it plays out. What we're definitely going to do is show off uh, some of the dungeon delving multiplayer uh, so you have your options here one need option I'm quickly just going to brush very very briefly is the dungeon master mode here which lets you actually sort of run a campaign or dungeon crawl sort of the quick randomly generated dungeons and you can like spawn monsters or put traps it's actually really neat and uh, DMZ ran me through one of those it was fun but since we're going to do the main campaign here uh, we're going to do the introduction, because sadly the prologue doesn't allow you to use a character you've already used in the past. And this would include my multiplayer character here, and my single player campaign character here. Uh, and here's the other part. This is actually being recorded after DMZ and I have <laughs> already done through the first dungeon and beaten it. Um, because of the way it worked with he and I coordinating schedules, I wasn't able to play through the prologue with him, and so we figured, okay, skip the prologue, let's go on, play the game, record that, and then when I had some more time, which I do now, um, I would make a quick character here, show the character creation options, and then just go through the opening storyline. So here's your character creation options. Um, male, female, shocking no one ever. Um, at the moment, and this is after a couple content packs have come out, they've added a new character class, the Drow. Surprising no one ever. Uh, but they're also going to add uh, another new race, the Tieflings, and Warlocks in soon. Right now they've got Paladin, Ranger, Fighter, Cleric, Rogue, Wizard. That's kind of the mix-up. So let's go with a Wizard for interesting. We'll go with an Elvish Wizard because they have some good stats for it. Background Soldier. Nope. Let's go with Sage. Sage seems smart. Now, these backgrounds do have... Yeah, see, there's your bonuses right now. So, starting gold, bonus to intelligence, plus one to a lot of damage dealt. So, pretty useful there. Makes sense for a Sage. Pirate gives you a plus one bonus to dex and a minus one to certain damage taken and some starting gold. Outlander, plus one constitution, minus two to all physical damage taken. So, there's a lot of options for min-maxing your build builds here as you can see so starting gold 800 if you're a noble i don't take that one take some gameplay bonuses hey plus one strength plus one physical damage dealt now we're talking plus one wisdom plus two to radiant necrotic and psychic damage dealt so pretty good for a priest guild merchant wisdom a bunch of healing items guild artisan intelligence a bunch of scrolls gladiator 50 percent bonus experience from defeating beasts Folk Hero, plus one Charisma, plus one to physical damage dealt. Good for a Bard. Entertainer, nearby allies heal for one hit point every 10 seconds. Better for a Bard. Criminal, plus one Dex, plus two to lock picking. Charlatan, plus one Charisma. So yeah, a lot of neat options here. Let's try Acolyte. No, Acolyte, plus three to all healing given. Wow, that's really good for support cleric. Plus one Dex. Spy. I'm just seeing what else might be good for my, uh... I think I'm gonna go with Sage. Nah. 
So plus two text, plus one intelligence. There's a better choice here. Evil elf. Dwarf. Dwarven mage. No. Maybe dwarven cleric, but... Whoa, plus two strength, plus two con. Okay, so make that guy a fighter. Dexterity, charisma, dexterity constitution. Half elf. Plus two charisma, two points of your choice. Neither to sleep and two skill points. Yeah. Basic human's not great. Plus one to all scores. Variant human, three points of your choice. Two points maximum and two skill points is very good. But since I already have a human, let's go with Sun Elf and Sage. To give us a nice plus two bonus to intelligence and the ability to throw some spells around. Skin color. Yeah, sure. Complexion. What do we got here? Probably a bunch of old stuff. Surly. Scarred. Sure. Hair. Can't make him drizz because he's not a drow. Let's go with red hair. Brown hair? That'll do. Eyes. So, yeah. You actually do have a couple options here. Whoa. <laughs> that's a little creepy. Eye angle. Eye color. A little hard to see from this direction, but since I'm not going to play him too much, we'll skip all this stuff here. Choice of equipment. Quarterstaff. You won't be using this much because you've got a spellcaster. Armor, boots, and cloth. Point by system. Pretty standard stuff. Um, you know, arcane use, so you're going to want to max this out as much as you can. I guess it's 17. And then we'll probably pump dexterity so we get some decent... I hate zeros. I have a serious problem with zero, like, penalties, so... There we go. Two more points left. Um... Three more points left? Ah, oh, can't do that intelligence. One more point in dexterity. And then a point in... Wisdom? For wisdom saves? Terrible choice. Constitution. Okay. I get a... I can buff these lats. Every four levels you get a stat boot because it's based on 5th edition. But there are no feats. So here we get the meat of the game here for skill points. It's all skill trees and it's cooldown based. We'll touch more on that later on uh, when DMZ shows up here. But for now... And, of course, you can take heavier armor proficiencies. And if you do that, you can actually wear the armor and it doesn't interfere with your spell casting because 5th edition. We're going to take Mage Armor, which increases my armor class, and Magic Missile, so we have a decent cooldown spell that does some damage. And name. Bad Dream Guy. Greetings. Well met. Some voice options. You can pick your deity. So, again, this is all background stuff, so... Give him the elf god. And let's see. Now let's make him evil. Yeah. And then your background you can customize. This, of course, you can all look at in multiplayer because multiplayer you can do randoms. So random people can join you. And you can kick them out, but you can keep them. And let's get on with the prologue here now that I've talked way too much. Bad dream guy. Easy because I'm lazy. And again, so no multiplayer options here. So we're just going to jump into it. Right after we skip this, because we're going to watch it again once DMZ shows up. So, magic of editing, go! A night on the road. You and your guildmates have set up camp along the high road, where you're escorting a merchant caravan from Neverwinter to Luskin. As you lay down to rest, however, your peaceful night's sleep is interrupted by a nightmare of fire, battle, and brutality. So basically the guild hall that we work at is seeing better days. Hey, get up! The guild hall's under attack! That doesn't sound creepy at all. What? What's happening? Bellamy is calling for our help. Grab your equipment and head downstairs now. I need a moment. Just a moment, and then we need you ready to fight! Let's go. Now! Oh my god, Gil. Okay. So, I thought this was really neat when... This is a tutorial, of course, but they've got the, the cool purple effect here to simulate the nightmare that's everyone, that you're having. And of course, everything's burning. So we got to go and get our stuff here. Now, I won't be playing Bad Dream Guy during the actual game, of course, because, well... You know, 
He's bad dream guy. I'll be playing my paladin. So we'll take all our stuff. We will equip our stuff. All right. If you insist. Uh oh. Report, soldier. I've begun a search of this floor, sir. I'll guard the stairwell. There must be no survivors. That's a little grim. So let's see. Firebolt is a cantrip. Witch bolt does lightning. Ray of frost does cold and slow. And then you have search, which is fairly common. And then uh, let's go to work on this guy with magic missile. Open up with your biggest hit. Did wow. You honestly think you could defeat me? Who's the bad guy here? So, again, you can pause, of course, because it is one of the things that's like Baldur's Gate, but hit alt to highlight chests and such, so there's a lot of overlap. Again, it's just not Baldur's Gate, and so you can see here how magic missile is on cooldown. And there's got 19 seconds left, so let's not wait too long. Let's go Ray of Frost. Slow him down a bit. Why would you... No. There we go. Firebolt. Such is the fate of all fools. You're a scary... No wonder you cause bad dreams. So, we've done our quests over here so far. So, next objective is gather allies. Bellamy, Gil, and Nettie. Glad you could make it, sleepyhead. It's about time you joined us. I thought an attack like this would have awakened me. Nah, we've all been on edge lately. Some of us need our beauty sleep more than others. Well, we have to get out of here. Yes, before the whole building collapses on us. One. Oh. All right, so here we go. So pause. Let's magic missile this guy here. Everyone else is doing pretty good on their own, I think. So let's just unpause and see what happens. Oh, you're a pretty tough guy. So lightning bolt. Ray of frost. And I think I got a quick healer. Discover what's going on and put a stop to it. Objections? Let's do it. I, I, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, you go ahead. I will catch up. No chance, rookie. We all fight or we all die. For the dawn. Okay, so we're parts of the burning dawn. Let's go do dawn stuff. Let's go. Oh. By the gods. I guess we're not getting out that way. Maybe we get through the basement. Good idea. The entrance to the basement is hidden. Some kind of concealment spell. Grab the ritual skull from that chest so we can get out of here. Wait, ritual skull? Very well. Between that and Bad Dream Guy, maybe Burning Dawn are evil. Rogue can be skilled at picking locks. Try using the need to open the lock chest. Okay. Oh. Bad Dream Guy is also a thief. Yeah, that is a ritual skull. It is a highly polished skull. With intricate runes carved into the surface. If I must. Put the skull on the brazier. Seriously though, what? So much evil. Brazier is empty, place the skull on it. Well, that explains why no one would ever find that. You'd have to have a highly polished skull. This is your basement? Ugh, this is undeveloped. You lose a lot of property value here unless you put it down some at least put up some drywall. Thank the gods you're here. Do you know what's happening? Uh the guildhall is under attack and we're trying to find out why. Under attack? That doesn't sound good. We should stay together until we can figure this all out. Keep your eyes open. There are hidden traps in this area. Followers may join your party for a short time, but can't be directly controlled. Where is Nettie? Here we go. So Nettie has search. So I'm gonna get my search on. Of course. Try and find those hidden traps before they ruin me. Okay. Good. I just got yet another indicator I should be using Nettie. 
So let's keep slowly searching here. Let's go. Slowly. Ah, there we go. Okay, so made some easy XP. Back to Bad Dream Guy. I suppose. Abilities, potions, and scrolls. So yeah, quick bar. So again, fairly standard stuff. Cantrips. Clicking on. Oh, this is actually important. The active cantrip. Clicking on either slot makes the weapon or cantrip a default attack. So. The Oh, nice. So he'll never move up in melee. That's really handy. Can I do this and like drag that over to... No. That is not on my bar anymore. Well, that's unfortunate. So back to flame. There we go. There's a bit of a delay between how long it takes for you to actually select something and when it actually happens. Oh, here we go. If you insist, you all shall Boom. I am... Okay, well, let's yeah. turn off your search. Well, let me get in there and wreck face. You will pay. Yep, that default cantrip thing is pretty darn useful, I have to say. One nice thing about your AI companions, too, is because everything's on cooldown, if you have any kind of healer, they'll just slowly top you up as uh, time winds down. Pfft, call that a magic missile. That's a magic Die! missile. You will pay. Probably should. Let's change things up. Oh, everyone's dead. Next? Yeah, yeah, Bellamy's a little crazy. And again, the video that comes after this is the first time I meet all these characters. I, I'm playing this prologue after I actually played the first part of the main game, so... No. Is that... Ken? They murdered my sister. You die now, you heartless bastards! I like the echoing effect they add here too in the dream. I suppose. Oh, that's seriously, you guys, you really need to see someone about your basement. If you insist. Is that the exit? That is not an exit. That is a problem. Why suffer an invasion when mortal fools march straight to me? You die now, demon! <laughs> such a large voice for such a small creature. Don't you see that we are on the same side? Wait, how are we on the same side? So impatient. You will see. Play a role, mortal. And all Stop the chatter and fight. fight. Of course. You're obviously here to die. I shall not disappoint. Wait, can we talk it over? I'm not with the halfling. And here we are. The high road. So at this point, we're going to back up a bit and watch the opening cutscene with uh, Arcanum Zero slash DMZ along to join me for the trip. I think you can actually even play the main campaign with like an entirely created party of your own player characters, but then you miss out on a lot of the NPC dialogue. And a lot of the reason to play these games is to watch the NPC stories, like in Baldur's Gate or Mass Effect or Planescape Torment. I haven't played Planescape Torment. I know. I'm a terrible person. I'm also just trying to fill this loading screen with idle chatter, and it's hard. Because I'm, I know I'm talking to you guys, but I'm also kind of talking to myself, and could this take any longer? I don't think it could. Except it does. Ah, oh, finally. Ah, you're finally awake. 
You were scaring the horses. You were thrashing around in your sleep. The trail boss thought you were possessed. Well, I am Bad Dream Guy. So viewers, thank you for watching. And when we pick up, we'll be back with my proper character and Arcanum Zero in tow. I hope you'll stick around and get a good look at this game and decide if maybe the multiplayer is worth it after all. Thanks for watching, viewers. See you next time.